Okay, there will be preparation commission meeting Tuesday, January 13th. So I call them to order and we'll call them. Mrs. Shepherds? Here. Mrs. Donano? Here. Ms. Jones? Here. Mr. Holton? Here. Mrs. Burdick? Ms. Redding? And Chairman Yem? Here. All right, next order of business is the approval of minutes for the December 9th meeting. I say. Any questions on it? No. Okay. I say call and approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. This meeting is citizens' input. Anybody? Go ahead. Pardon me? Your mic's on. Your mic's on. Now it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Your turn, Mr. Wilson. Told you. <laughs> you said check it. Okay, let's go. Okay, thank you, Commissioners. My name is Charles Wilson. I live at uh, 2134 uh, 18th Avenue in Vero Beach, Florida. I'm a city resident. I'm here today representing the Vero Beach Chamber of Commerce, not to be confused with any other Chamber of Commerce. It's the Vero Beach Chamber of Commerce. You can wish us a happy birthday. We celebrated our, our birthday uh, last week. We've been uh, uh, operating for now one complete year successfully, and we're very proud of ourselves. We now have 104 members that are all businesses located within the city limits of the city of Vero Beach and the Barrier Island that we serve. Um, the reason I came to the commission today uh, is, is uh, two things. One, I, I want you to be aware, I can't announce the specifics of it today, but I want you to be aware that the Vero Beach Chamber of Commerce is scheduled to go before both the county commission and the city council on the 20th. Uh, at both of their meetings, the county commission in the morning, the uh, city council meeting in the afternoon, um, for two reasons. One is to go over some of the accomplishments that we've had over the past year, which have been considerable. And in addition to our 104 members, we uh, appe appealed to the Vero Beach City Council and successfully were able to uh, help lobby to get the lifeguard hours returned um, so that we have a full beach coverage. We think is very important to our businesses in this community as we bring tourism into this community that we have safe beaches, and I, I hope we can continue with that. Um, I, uh, uh, the other thing that we're going to be announcing uh, is we have three major events, and those events will be coming before you uh, that are scheduled uh, for this year that we have been planning for some time. Uh, one is in March, one is in July, and one is in October. Um, all three of those will need to come before you, I believe, to get the uh, uh, the permissions and, and the, the things that are necessary to put these on. I want you to know why we're doing that. One of the reasons we're doing that is because our goal and mission is to help businesses, tourism, and economic development for the city of Vero Beach and the Barrier Island. And these three events, I believe, and we believe, are uh, one of them is quite large. Um, and uh, I believe that will be uh, helpful for our summer visitors and summer, uh, summer businesses, uh, and we, we're looking forward to working with the council on those. Uh, we will be announcing those on the 20th, but it, it will come before you. One thing to remember is that the latest figures that show that 73.2%, I'm sorry, 73.02% of all revenues from tourist development tax come from within the city limits of the city of Vero Beach. Um, a very small amount, however, is spent for the city of Vero Beach. So just keep in mind that as we bring in tourism, the city of Vero Beach already contributes 73% of all revenues from tourist development tax, which means that that's why people come here as they come to stay in Vero Beach. So I just wanted to be, make you aware that these things were coming. We have met with uh, the Veterans Council, uh, and we have met briefly with the Recreation Department. We have met with several other organizations, and um, I'm looking forward to working with you over the next year. Uh, just keep in mind what we're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be working together. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Rob, is it safe to say he's not conflicting with anything important in March? Um, what day is your event? March. Uh, 13, 14, 15. Our March dates are March 5th through March 12th. Okay. Can you tell us anything as board members? <laughs> You're going to wait until tell something. them the way. You, you're just going to wait until the 20th, right? Or it's up to you. You can tell them. Looking to see if the... 
I, 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 I better inform the council first, if you don't mind. I, I can tell you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, he's not really looking for our, our blessing. He's just going to inform us. No, ma'am. It's just that we haven't, we haven't talked to the council yet about the concept, nor have we talked to the press, nor have we made the final arrangements of where this thing is going to take place. And it's because it's out of our control. Yeah, this meeting is televised. Yeah, so if I say it, it's going to be, it's, it's not, knowledge. it's not, it's, it certainly is no disrespect. I could have just not come. You know, that, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. That's just right around the corner, though. It's pretty quick. Yes, ma'am, it sure is. And it, we're, uh, I can tell you that we're coordinating with the school system, the county, and the city to, to do this event. Well, we look forward to hearing what it is. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. New business. We'll start with Mr. Tumso. And as he's coming up here, I would just like to recommend that um, Eric and the entire Vero Beach Lifeguard Association should be applauded for all they're doing outside regular working hours, et cetera, with their group. And uh, they've worked diligently, and they've put the efforts out there that are above and beyond. And I applaud them for everything they've been doing. Yes, do we? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Eric Tumso, 1351 White Heron Lane, Vero Beach. I'm a proud member of the lifeguard uh, staff, employee of the city, and I'm the president of the Vero Beach Lifeguard Association. Um, on behalf of uh, Scott Cavanis, a board member behind me, my uh, muscle, um, Dr. Zambelli, uh, Dr. McNamee, um, Dave Farrow, all those folks couldn't be here today. They had to work. Um, we'd like to thank you guys for giving us this opportunity to go over the 2014 Vero Beach Lifeguard Association beach survey on beach report. A little background on the VBLA. It started in August of 2011 when uh, the city budget cuts forced um, some staff reductions in lifeguards and also the reduction in hours in Humiston. So there's a quite a few concerned citizens um, who got together and made uh, started the Vero Beach Lifeguard Association. We have members um, from the business community like Scott, concerned citizens, community activists, and yes, uh, lifeguards as well. Um, one of our goals is to, a few of our goals, we have a few goals, but our major goal is to educate. Educate the people who come to the beach, educate the policy makers, educate the taxpayers, um, because uh, we have to be proactive in this type of environment. As a lifeguard, our, one of our major jobs is to be proactive if we see somebody who's probably shouldn't be going in the water or if they're in the water and having a problem. It's incumbent upon us to be proactive. So between education and being proactive, um, we can make our uh, beaches and our pools as safe as possible. So it's a, a really a focus for us. Um, the downside of not knowing what's happening out there at the beach, um, if you're a tourist or if you're a policymaker, um, you don't have the knowledge that we think is required to make sound decisions. If it's you've got a four, four to six foot ground swell and you've never seen the ocean before, you're from Wisconsin, and you go right in, there's going to be a problem. Or you're going to um, cut hours or do other things that might put lives in jeopardy, then... Um, the Vero Beach Lifeguard Association obviously um, will try to um, educate people. Hopefully, that so when the information's out there, you can make the decision based upon uh, information and not um, a conjecture or uh, lack of knowledge. So we go, we create awareness through uh, classes. We've been to a lot of the elementary schools and teach. Uh, about rip currents and water safety. We have people come out on the beach, and we've done um, classes out on the beach about beach safety. Uh, we issue monthly reports. We issue this yearly report. We do a year, uh, monthly radio show. Um, we do, obviously, a lot of fundraisers, and we've raised over $10,000 um, and given over $10,000 of equipment to lifeguards uh, from the city. Uh, so there, so we have the equipment we need to uh, better service the community. Some folks say this might be a conflict of interest, me standing up here. I'm a city employee. I obviously f 
think differently. I think this is uh, there's a mutual ben- benefit. It's great for um, lifeguards uh, if we have the equipment we need. Uh, the CDC came out with a report in 2001, the effectiveness of lifeguarding. And for, ever, for every one of the statistics they had is that for every death by drowning at the beach in a beach community costs the community $790,000 in, in lost revenue. I can tell you a number of people who still come up to us and ask us about the sharks, ask about that one kid back in 97 who lost his life by a shark. Incidents that happen on the beach. It's bad for business. So that there's a mutual benefit here. And of course the taxpayers, they're flipping the bill, so they need to know what's happening out there. The people who make up the VBLA, we live, we work, we play at the beach. I think we're more than um, capable of uh, providing some information to folks who might not be able to get out to the beach that often. So you can make informed decisions. A um, couple examples of proactive versus reactive decision making. Obviously, the, the tragedy we had um, on the uh, on the Seventeenth Street Bridge with that young gentleman, that sixteen year old who got hit by a car. In a reactive measure, we put those uh, the wider bike lanes out there, and they hope that doesn't happen again. A proactive approach, and one that we. Uh, thank uh, Vero Beach Chamber of Commerce for helping us out with and um, um, City Council for bringing Humiston Beach back. As you know, uh, the fiscal year started October 1st. On October 18th, about 3.30 in the afternoon at Humiston Park, uh, it was a Saturday, I remember it well. Big groundswell. I mean, people really shouldn't have been out there. We were flying red. And there was four kids ages 7 through 12 who were staying at a resort, and they got caught in a rip. So this is about 3.30. So Vince Valentino, one of the lifeguards, jumped in, got all, got all of them out. Within 15 minutes, so approximately 3.45, a young mother and her three- and four-year-old child were out there. Same thing happened. So we commend the city council for reestablishing those hours because it didn't take very long to get a return on your investment when you had all these people who have little knowledge of the beach and water conditions who got in trouble. In the past, we've, um, we've relied on folks uh, from Scott, let's say Scott's business. He's had, I think, 14 rescues because a lot of his business is out there in front of Central Beach. And I don't think we necessarily should be relying on other tourists, um, folks that work for Scott to make those kind of decisions, especially when you can get someone in more trouble. So proactive versus reactive, and I think it all boils down to education. Uh, we advocate a five-year plan. Um, we can see that there's the growth in tourism uh, at the beach, on at businesses, the rec centers and the, and the tennis courts, the marina, and what we recommend is uh, being proactive once again and looking at ways that we can make uh, the water as safe as possible. So um, we're doing a lot of a couple other things before I go into this. Uh, we've been very active uh, in the community. Uh, we just got done coaching Special Olympics kids in both swimming, uh, surfing, and paddle boarding. And that went very well. Um, we've helped the city and will continue to help the city with our 501c3 status and sell beer. That's not a stretch for us. We're more than happy to help. We also started a competitive lifeguard, sponsored a competitive lifeguard competition team where the ultimate goal is to um, uh, compete in the nationals, which will be held in Daytona Beach this year. Uh, we've got a scrimmage coming up against the Canadian national team who actually train here on the island. So we'll be uh, doing our best against them. And you guys can all come out and uh, hopefully support us. And then, of course, we just had the BBC America uh, reality show come out and do uh, um, the filming, and that's going to come out in June. All of this is uh, for the sole purpose of educating the public getting funding for lifeguards and having beaches as safe as possible. 
So we really uh, do take our own time and our efforts in order to make that happen. So we do appreciate the, your acknowledgement. One of the one things we're working on now is is we really feel that at Humiston Park, there is a need for a, a lifeguard tower and headquarters. A couple of reasons, safety and command and control. Being a military guy, I can go on and on about command and control, but <clears throat> safety is a big issue for our lifeguards right now. And for years, lifeguards are sitting out there on the deck, on the boardwalk. You're in the sun, you're in the wind, and you're also, unfortunately, you are uh, a target sometimes of people. I personally have been assaulted twice out there. It's not a safe environment for lifeguards, not only physically, um, but mentally and everything else. The wind comes on, and it, it can be pretty rough. When incidents happen, we have, on average, you have between 60, 20 and 60 seconds to get to a victim. There has to be command and control within those areas, those three guarded beaches. Right now, we have our captain and lieutenants up at Bethel Creek House, which is... Um, west of JC. I can tell you that if we have a major medical at South, it's going to take a good probably 15 minutes to get a lieutenant or captain down to aid in um, the first response. So our idea is to build a tower um, where the existing building is right now. Um, we have support from an architect already. We want to present that to you guys, as, you know, Rob first, and then see what you all think of it. And the uh, theme would be um, the, uh, uh, just like the um, life-saving station that they had at J.C. Park. It's apropos, right? I mean, the life-saving life -saving station at, at J.C. Park was the first on the east coast of Florida. So we'd like to develop <clears throat> and propose a headquarters and tower that will mimic that architecture. So it would have some historical significance within the community as well. Plus, it will function as the safety measures and the command and control measures I talked about. So um, if you would allow us to be the ears and eyes on the beach, we appreciate it, and um, we'll be more than happy to do that. So we put together this beach survey, um, and it encompasses the year of 2014. As you can see, attendance was up about 50,000. Um, from last year, preventative actions. When we talk about being proactive, that's what preventative actions are. If we see somebody who should, or doing something they shouldn't, or um, getting a little bit too far out, they say a good lifeguard is a dry lifeguard. So that 11,000 preventative actions, minor medicals, those are your stings, uh, your abrasions, major medicals, those are your heart attacks, your broken bones, your uh, dislocations your spinal injuries, and um, 40 rescues. Last year we had 71, this year we had 40, the year before that we had 30. So it fluctuates. <clears throat> we can't really see any major trends uh, with um, population versus rescues. We basically had rescues in almost every month, regardless of uh, the population time of year. I mean, it can happen at any time. And you can see total park attendance by month uh, big months, March, April, March, and then again in the summertime. So <clears throat> when the tourists are here, it's really important that um, uh, the beaches will be guarded. And then here we have attendance and preventative actions um, and medicals and rescues. Um, some trends, but I don't necessarily think over a three-year span we could really uh, make anything conclusive. You can extrapolate a few different things, but basically we're seeing a lot of people out there. Um, this December was crazy. Uh, parking is definitely an issue. People are parking all over the place at South Beach, and they're parking on the grass, and that destroys the uh, irrigation system, et cetera, et cetera. So parking is not only an issue at Central Beach, but it's also an issue at South Beach, too. Observation and recommendations. <coughs> uh, the Cove, uh, that's the, where Central, where South Beach is located. Uh, we're really seeing the beach growing. We're getting all that expensive sand from the county, filling it right in there, no charge to us. One to two feet a, a, a year, we're guesstimating. There's a definite need to bring that lifeguard tower up, either out of the sand and forward, or at least out of the sand. Right now, it's at least three feet under. And the pitch doesn't allow for good visibility. 
And if we can't save them, we can't see them. That's the same issue that we're having at Humiston Park as well with that lifeguard tower shack or building, whatever you want to call it. The railings are in the way. The steps are in the way. <clears throat> you can't see anything, really. <clears throat> uh, the beach grooming, I think they're doing a great job. Um, unfortunately, Harley, uh, the gentleman who was doing it for a number of years, is not doing well. I don't know his medical status, but he's not doing well. But um, the gentleman who picked up the slack is really doing a good job. Um, grooming the beaches. Now, of course, we talk a little bit about this meeting about, or in the report about, the consequence of grooming the beach. You know, you groom the beach, what you do is you take away the mechanism for um, dune creation. You know, you make it look nice, and that's great, but then you're not going to get the dunes to form. Just look at South Beach, where the dunes, uh, where we groom a lot. There's no dunes, but just north and south of that, you have beautiful dunes, and that's protection for the real estate, all those multi-million dollar homes. So there's a price to be paid for uh, aesthetics. <clears throat> Dogs are a big problem. I can tell you countless times uh, there's uh, either a, a lack of awareness of the rules, uh, law, or just ignorance, or um, turning a blind eye. There's been a number of different occasions that I have to apologize for tourists from all over the globe who went to go lay down in the sand and guess what they had a little present waiting for them so it's embarrassing we apologize left and right but people spend thousands of dollars to come here and then they sit in crap so um <clears throat> it's a big problem uh, there's signs all over the place people don't read signs um so we'd like to see something uh, done about that and of course um sexton plaza uh where mulligans and ocean grill is that's a really um a section of the beach, a four miles of beach that we have here that we cannot see as lifeguards. And the VBLA is concerned that that section of beach, which is very popular with skimboarders and is really the heart of the hotel community, we can't see. And Scott, his company has made quite a few rescues in that area. So what we'd like to see, <clears throat> that maybe part of the five-year plan, if you so choose to talk about it. It's some sort of chair in the air, as we call it, maybe on weekends, holidays, something to combat that that issue of safety <clears throat> out there. Um, and uh, last fall of 2013, we published a beach safety report. And we had 24 points of um, concern, and <clears throat> the Recreation Department has uh, done a good job of addressing seven of the 24, and we'd like to... Um, uh, continue with that, um, getting as many of those issues uh, f that our members brought up addressed by the city, if, if at all possible. So um, that's basically it in a nutshell. We do a, do a monthly report every every month, and um, we kind of go over this stuff again, <clears throat> but just monthly. Excuse me. Um, Scott, do you have anything you want to? Um, I would like to add a couple of little things. Hello, Scott Cavanis, 740 35th Avenue Southwest, Vero Beach, uh, owner of Shark Bait and um, concessioner with the city. I'd like to commend the city council for reestablishing the hours of operation at Hummuston Beach because it was really scary for us to, if we had a rain day, for example, and we knew our operations were closing down, it was really sketchy for us to leave the beach knowing that the lifeguards were leaving the beach soon after or uh, right around when we are and there's still you still have guests that are you know they come pay a lot of money to come here and if it's raining they might stay out there where my company was leaving so and with that reestablishment of the hours i think that's helped a lot and what was touched on with the report about the sexton plaza thing that's definitely an area of concern right in there because that is outside of the purview of um the humiston tower or jc tower so with that in mind just for future reference something to work on but kudos to um, the council for reestablishing hummus and definitely. All right, wait a minute. There are a couple of things. Uh, so, Scott, you've been in business about, what, six months, eight months? On, on hummus and beach? I mean, at South Beach? Yeah. Um, we're, as we've gone through permitting issues, getting our storage area established, and... Um, we're just we're really looking forward to getting into this season and starting it off well. We had a, a, a grand opening, and then just after that, we've had a lot of 
seasonal weather. I don't want to say unseasonal, unseasonable weather, but we've had some seasonal weather that was pretty nasty, and we're really looking forward to getting out there. We're, we're setting up on any good days. Right now, the... Um, there's a whenever you open any type of operation like this, there's a period of time when the um, you have to build customer relations and things like that. So we're working on that. So you really haven't been in open long enough to really have any true tracking data. Right? No, not yet, not yet. Um, it should be. I'm pretty sure it'll be a fairly lucrative operation for the city. One of the things that we're trying to balance though is the amount of gear that we're putting on the beach. Um, as I explained to the city council, when I was trying to get the contract, the um, the city could have easily sold the contract to a company to come in and do it and they would put five million chairs on that stretch of beach. Um, but to have it aesthetically pleasing where it would be gain the acceptance of the local and tourists alike um, and to keep it in a nice thing is, for example, um, our last operation, I think we had five setups on the beach. That's five, five rentals. So just to very slowly ingratiate the service with the locals and not get any kind of crazy sticker shock or um, some kind of uh, outcry from the public, we want to make sure that it's well accepted. Anybody else? Questions? I have a couple of things. <clears throat> About the dogs. There's a couple of things. Maybe we could put some signs at the dog park that says dogs are not allowed on the beach. Because a lot of people just don't know that. I mm -hmm. stopped a couple the other day, early afternoon, heading across day 1A. I live in the Bethel Creek area. Heading across, we have a little cut through there that goes to the ocean. And they... We're fixing, and I said, wait, 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 are you, are you visiting or do you live here? And they said, no, we live here. And I said, you know, we can't take your dogs on the beach there, especially now because the lifeguards are there. You know, I mean, you're not close. Where you go, where we go through right there, it's quite a ways to either one of those to uh, Bethel Creek, to Humiston, not Humiston. JC. JC Park and Tracking Station. It's quite a ways between lifeguards there. And people go through the holes there. And also beachfront homeowners are letting their dogs out there. You know, so the people that aren't locals, people that are visiting, think it's okay because they see them over there. So I don't really know what the answer is. You can put up some signs. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're not on A1A. There's an awful lot of people no, that park right, right along beaches, A1A. So. Yeah, right mm. just north of, um, of the Bethel Creek House. You know, there's cut-throughs there, about three of them right before CVS. A lot of dogs go in through there. It's a class three misdemeanor, $300 fine. Um, it, it, but it's kind of like the parking up until recently. It's not enforced um, for whatever reason. Obviously, there's our personal feeling is that there's, you know, obviously, uh, don't want to piss these people off. But at the same time, it's a health and safety issue. So I don't, you know, whatever you guys recommend, we're all for it because it's um, mostly they don't know about it. Um, but a lot of times you get the comments, well, it'll dry up, I'll bury it, um, you know, I didn't know. It's just... Isn't it okay in North County? Nowhere in the county is it. No. The only thing that's permitted is um, if it is a uh, service dog, and then it still should be on a leash, um, papers, uh, vest, but... Um, yeah, nowhere in the county. The only place on the beach around here is down at Walton Rocks, down near Stewart. They do allow, apparently they do allow dogs on the beach, but nowhere in the county or the city is it permitted. On the beach. Mm. On the beach. Hutchinson Island. Oh, well, that's, what, that's what I told these people. Try Hutchinson Island. <laughs> we'll keep apologizing for the city when people lie in it, so... Yeah, well, you, you have no authority to enforce that anyway, do you? Oh, uh, we ask yeah, people, yeah. yeah, we ask them to leave, and we do that quite a bit. Um, if they say it's a service dog, we get this a lot, too. Oh, it's a service dog. It's a little chihuahua or poodle, you know. And, of course, they could have, you know, uh, issues with, you know, um, seizures and stuff like that, but you can kind of tell. So we get that a lot. And if they say that, we are asked not to um, go ahead and... and question it further yeah you can buy those things online <laughs> yeah yeah they're cracking down on that though as well are they 
Yeah, well, but I will talk to the dog park people about putting up a sign there because I'm sure a lot of people that go to the dog park also go to the beach. You know, and maybe well, they just don't know. Well, I'm going to check on the crossovers. You know, Eric's talking, about, I know, from the beach ones. That's one thing, but from the crossovers, we can check on that. We have signs in front of every beach. It says it on the on our placards, our um, dry erase boards. It says it. Yeah. It says it everywhere. I'm just thinking of crossovers. Yeah, this anything. Where you, yeah. Don't, you come in. From yeah, it's really from like Ocean Colony or whatever that is, Your up to CVS. And all those gay feathers. And mm -hmm. we'll, we'll take a look and see if there's stuff. Yeah. Mr. City Manager. The issue, as we've had on many things, is enforcement of the ordinance. That's correct. Do we enforce it or not? Well, I think, as Eric said, that the lifeguards try to work it. But, no, we do not have a policeman down on the beach arresting people. No, I mean, if this. somebody gives them resistance after they... Oh, yes, they can always call the police. And, and I presume that has been done, but... We've never had resistance. Um, just basically, most people, everyone's been good about it, but... I mean, they'll leave times. when you... But... But, Mr. Chairman, one of the issues, and for example, what Sue is talking about, where those cut-throughs are, we really have no presence. Uh, I personally have used the tracking station, used it many times. The tracking station and the people who live, for example, in Indian River Shores, uh, they bring their dogs down from their houses, yeah. and if they live there, in the condos that are just north of the pier, there, mm -hmm. there's some older folks that I've seen them with small dogs coming down on, on that beach as well. Now, I don't think they go down to Central Beach with their dogs, but uh, I have seen the dogs that are uh, somewhat under control, I guess, of the owners. They don't, they're don't; they not on leashes by any stretch. But we, we don't have an officer that goes and patrols the beach. No, I understand that. I mean, but where is it a big issue? Which beach? All of them. Okay. Yeah, pretty much all of them. Um, it depends on, you know, time time of the year and everything else, but pretty much it's pretty rampant. What about the turtle nests? And that's one of the reasons why there is no dog there are no dogs allowed because a loose dog could go up and, and, and dig them up. That's one of the reasons that it's not allowed in the county. Hmm. Anybody else? Anything else? Actually I have a request from a family that uh, wanted to thank two of your guards. I don't know who they are. She didn't know who they were. That you did a rescue around New Year's. Stephen Harkness and um, and um, Murray Baker. Yeah, you pulled them out of a riptide. Apparently, yep, they're in. Yeah, she was in rough shape too. Yeah. Whole family. Her. She went in with uh, her husband to save the child, and they all got no problem. So they did a great job. Well, they wanted me to thank you. I'll pass it along. Thank you. I think you guys do an amazing job, so thank you. Thank you. Can we get a sign for the dog park? I says, know a company, I think so. <laughs> I think you want to talk to the dog people. Nope. Y'all could stick a sign anywhere you want, can't you? The dog people would have to ask permission. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we can't. Uh, that property is under contract, so we would have a very difficult time, and we, we sort of go through our routine with the uh, dog people on their signage and where they put them and the type of the signage. marina, too. There's people at the marina all the time with dogs that are heading yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, we can put something at the marina. That's not a problem. As a matter of right. fact, uh, I think we have something there at the marina about the dogs, because that, that is another well, we'll little issue. We'll look at the crossovers, for sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Uh, moving on, Bob Slunner's baseball field, Mr. George Young. Yes, I'm George Young, 658 Browning Terrace. Uh, recommending, I uh, think you all, uh, each one of you all got a copy of uh, the, the pamphlet that I put together. I gave to uh, Mr. Slezak. Did you all get that? We got one, yeah. uh, we got one page. <coughs> I didn't get that. This? No, right. Description and summary. Did you guys get one of these? Yeah, yeah, next one. Mm -hmm. 
I got it from here too. All right, thank you. Okay, here we go. We're looking at uh, trying to uh, establish Bob Summers baseball field for our um, travel baseball programs. As you see, um, I had uh, some essential questions that were uh, you all may have or may have a question on as far as um, how we would maintain or pay for Bob Summers field. And uh, we have approximately right now uh, five to six travel baseball teams that are in existence. And we also would like to do some camps and clinics over there to be able to play, uh, pay to be able to use that facility. Um, also, um, as far as uh, the facility over there, the insurance, we'd have our own insurance through USSSA. And uh, we all, uh, we would like to recommend or talk with you all about uh, a five five year lease with you all for that for that baseball field. Can you all think of? Um, I have uh, Ed Nicolacci and Joe Fontana who would be uh, part of the uh, the board as far as who'd be over there with myself and Charlie Brown is the other uh, individual that would also be in their their um, their bios are in the back. You can see a little bit about them. I have I have put, put in the back for all four for the gentlemen that would be involved with the with the baseball field. Right now, we've talked to uh, some. I've been practicing over there and paying to use the facility with our teams. And uh, I've had uh, a couple of the dog park people, the president included, come over and very, very pleased that there's a group over there now using the baseball field. And, you know, we've been over there practicing. And, you know, we have been paying to use the lights over there. And it gives the, the dog people, dog park, uh, an opportunity to be out there a little bit longer because the lights are on and they're able to to utilize that also while we're out there practicing and playing over there as far as uh, our, our teams are concerned. All right, I got a couple of questions. But, but we didn't get the handout, so. Which handout are you talking about? Whatever he's speaking here. from. I thought I gave him all. Okay, I have several I have copies here. Yeah, you showed it to me, didn't you? No, this is, what I showed you is a different thing, the lease agreement. I have, is it, what on I showed you. I have it on here. Yeah. Here, here I'll go. share with Angie. Well, here, here's, I read it. I don't need it. Here's two more. Okay. She sent it out. I have it on here. Well, Judy had one. Yeah. Judy had one from somewhere. So. Yeah, I didn't. You got it for a Here's one more. Here. We're good. Thank I don't you. need it. We're all two more. Greg, you want one? It. He's got. I, I, he's got I, one. I have one. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're good with that. It was emailed out to everybody. I was like, email. I have it on my thing. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I'll start it off while they're reading, since I read it. Uh, I guess you're proposing to go into a similar lease agreement as what you did at Michael Field. That's correct. Right. Uh, whose barbecue did us out over there? There's a barbecue. Oh, that must have been there from uh, when they had uh, they had the um, Babe Ruth over there when the other facility. Coach Fontana was part of that program. I didn't know if it was one of yours. I just happened to notice. Bob Summers of the that pool. was probably <coughs> something that was left from the senior, junior, senior program from Vero Beach National Little League. I would guess. Uh, hopefully, it's not rusted out, and you can use it. Okay. Uh, are the benches there? Cause no, there's right now. There's no benches in there, and um, uh, there's um, as far as there's no scoreboard there right now. But we have means of you know being able to put those back in and putting a new stuff up there. You're going to get a new scoreboard. That's correct. Uh, what about seating? Seating. We're, we're, we will maintain the facility. We will. We we would like to redo the outfield grass. Obviously, put some seed, some rye seed down, and uh, take care of the uh, the maintenance of the the, the um, sprinklers, and also take care of the infield to make it accessible for an, uh, eight year olds all the way up to fifteen year olds. So by taking the grass out of the infield and putting clay down, we'd bring in numerous loads of clay and be able to make it uh, adaptable for all ages over there. So you'd have a different group of ages over there from all the way from eight years old all the way to 15. Yeah, I noticed there were some rising pipes. I didn't know if they were irrigation pipes or whatever they were in the infield. Well, I think it was just uh, we were marking where the um, uh, sprinkler heads are so we could fix them. All right. You're going to be able to get the tarpaulin back for home plate? And oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the real question I have, 
in this lease, are you going to allow uh, the public access when you're not using it? Absolutely. In other Absolutely. words, the gates aren't going to be locked? No. No, they'll, 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 uh, we'd like to be able to, the public to use it. Uh, again, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have the same type of uh, situation as far as the other, other uh, fields are concerned in the area to where, you know, it's probably $10 for the lights and 15 or $16 for the usage of the field. That way we can put the money back into the field and keep the upkeep up. Are you talking about using it primarily at night? We use it a lot at night right now during daylight savings because a lot of kids and uh, pe people don't get off work till five, six o'clock. So you're not you're talking about probably starting practice or starting something no no earlier than five thirty or six. Well, that's good because the dog park is slammed. Parking, Absolutely. Parking wise, it's a real problem just for the dog park people. So they'd have an opportunity to get out there in the later in the after, and you know yeah. you know seven or eight o'clock at night to where they can get their dogs out there. I'm just the saying they on. take up an awful lot of parking places, and you might have trouble finding a place to park. But if you're coming later, you know, they'll yeah. be. And also, we'll, we'll, we usually use uh, the parking underneath the trees. They're more up to the, the fences to where they can get right in with their dogs normally is what we've seen in, in, when we've been out there the last month. Are you going to sponsor tournaments? Yes, sir. What are you going to do for parking? Well, right now, as far as it will be a four to 16 tournament and we'll vary the, t the games so that we're not having an overload of all six teams waiting there at the field at the same time. So we'd have enough room to be able to get two teams in and they get a break and then bring other two teams in. So it won't be an overload to where you won't be able to have enough parking. In what there. time of the year are you going to do these tournaments? Probably in the summertime on the weekends. That'd be good. Staff recommendation. Let's do that this time. I, I'm all for it. Get that usage of that field if these guys want to maintain it and improve the property, improve the quality of the field. I see no reason for it not to be conceptually approved. I agree. All right, I'll make a motion that we'll forward this to City Council. I'll second that. For approval. I second. Any, any yeah. further discussion? I love baseball, and I know many kids at my school that are going to be playing with you, so I'm for it. Yeah, I'm all for it, too. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, I think we can do a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, oh, business. Background checks. Yeah, just to let you know, I know that was a, a long, we had a, a long discussion at the last meeting regarding background checks for renters and everything else. Uh, Patty, myself, the attorney's office, human resources department, finance department all got together, sat down, and uh, looked. we're getting to the point where we're going to be finalizing the actual um, rental agreement for our renters. And um, those background checks, which was a serious discussion, we'll, we'll come back with our, our final uh, decision and bring that to you next month's Recreation Commission meeting. Recap of Christmas. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Um, we had record crowds this year. It seems to be growing every year, so which is great. Um, it was a beautiful program, and thank you to any of you that came to watch it. The kids had a great time. And now we're planning the circus. Are you going to go to three nights? Excuse me? So you're going to go to, well, this is one night for Christmas drama. Yes, right? Christmas drama. Two, yes. Shows, two shows, one day. Is that and then enough? the circus will be three days. They were about 20% higher in per, uh, people coming to the show than they have been in the past. And I think, you know, one of the things that Eric brought up a little bit in reflecting, and Jim and I heard this again today at the, uh, at the staff meeting, and that is the number of people coming here have really increased. The airport has seen it. The marina has seen it. We've seen it on the beaches. We've seen it at Riverside Tennis. And even in, believe it or not, even in participation <coughs> in some of our programming. So I think that people are coming here, and I think people are also not just as tourists, but I think people are coming back here to live here, and they're participating in our activities. And it's so. such a positive thing for kids to be involved in, and, you know, we're happy to have it as part of our program so how much are we taxing facilities with this increase so, you know the one thing i can tell you is that as we as 
as we see this growth, um, we are trying to address it and, and wade into it slowly and easily. And if it, it's not something that's bursting at the seams yet, but it is something where if we see that there's a little bit more, if we need to have something open more for an hour or something, then we're doing it. And, you know, one of the things that was a heavy set issue in last year's budget was the lifeguards with the Amiston, as Derek had mentioned. And you could see between the participation numbers and also just, you know, revenues and, and the streams that's going on in tourism and everything else, you can see that there's more of a pull. And we were able to, fortunately, that's been brought back. And as Eric said, you guys, with your support and all the businesses and, and also um, the city and the council and everybody else, they all looked at it and it, it happened and it was approved. So what we've been doing is we're just kind of looking at these things one at a time. The facilities themselves are being impacted, but not to the point where they're bursting out. If there's any time where we need to expand an hour or two here or there, I'll go talk to Jim. I usually do. And I'll just say, hey, we're looking at this. We're kind of keeping an eye on this. If it continues, we'd like to expand this. And Jim's been quite amenable. So that's where we're at. What's the usage of Sexton Plaza Beach? The Sexton Plaza Beach is is a interesting beach because it's true. It is centrally located between your hotels. Uh, participation levels when you go out there, we've been out there for anything from Easter egg hunts to occasional visits. You, it's just going to vary. If the weather is good and solid, you're going to have a good crowd out there. If you have a big event or some kind of special event like they had with the, surf, uh, the, the, the surfing contest, I mean, you had hundreds of people out there. Now, what I will say is I, I found it interesting with weekends and holidays as a long-term approach. Uh, Sexton, I think, is something that will probably need to be addressed. Uh, I look at the first thing when it came to uh, our beaches and the lifeguarding of our beaches was, let's get almost an hour's back. Well, that's now happening, and as Eric said, you know, you're getting, you're getting people using it, and you had some people's lives saved. Sexton Plaza, I know another big issue with Sexton Plaza is you do have one concern is you do have parking issues, parking concerns. If you put a lifeguard out there, and this is something that's going to have to be discussed, but you put a lifeguard out there, people think there's a lifeguard out there. So that means people may be parking in those same areas that we're having parking issues with. So that's something that's got to be weighed. And I think that, again, you know, I think that it's just something that's just going to have to, we're just going to have to play that one out. Yeah, but if we get somebody caught in a rip current there or, you know. And, and I do. I don't know what the response is. Yeah, uh, I just. You know, from the other areas. I don't no, think I, it's I, quick. You know, I look at everything and it's, you know, starting, the, the biggest thing I see is that the first thing I see is we've gotten hours back at Humiston Beach. And I look at it, we have three beaches that are guarded. And I'll let Jim, if you. Mr. Chairman, if you also notice, we've uh, redone a lot of the signage and directing people toward guarded beaches. For example, if you come yeah, down true. Beachland, we give you directions to both the JC and the South Beach. And then if you get on uh, Beach, uh, Beach Boulevard there, uh, Ocean, excuse me, Ocean Drive, you will see the signs that take you down to uh, the Hummison Park. And we are now building a new sign that's going to have the national signature things for restrooms and for guarded beaches and that kind of stuff to try to get people in those directions of where the lifeguards actually are and where the playgrounds are actually located for restrooms. Because we're running into conflicts with the local businesses in that area with people that are actually changing clothes <laughs> virtually in the parking lot, and that's mm. becoming a challenge. So we're, uh, again, trying to make that accommodation for those folks. On those beaches where there's cut-throughs, do you need a sign there that says, this is an unguarded beach, swim at your own risk? I'm not sure putting signs on private property is anything that we, because I don't know who owns that property where those people cut through. Depending on your <clears throat> it could be ours, but it could be private property too so we have to be very careful yeah you, you can't really because you, you don't want to you know if there is an issue then it's their responsibility and not ours you know what would help along there is no parking signs because there's people all the time pulled over on this adjacent to a1a between 
you know, the dune and the beach. And they pull out into traffic, getting in and getting out of those places. We, we can ask the Department of Transportation if they want to do that. It's My point is that people are driving in to get to those cut-throughs. Oh, absolutely. As opposed to people just walking from the neighborhood like it used to be. People are driving in there, and there's cars parked right along A1A on the yeah. east side of A1A all the time. Yeah. There's no question that those are becoming much more frequently used, especially on the weekends, going through those accesses. I've seen people on bicycles going in there. I did. I have I have not personally gone down through one of those trails, but I, I well, picture it would be very difficult to ride a bicycle, but they do it. But evidently, there's a trail through that that brush that people ride a couple of miles. Okay, I, I just I'm, which location are you talking? Where at? North of like Ocean Gate and south of CVS. In that's where those the tracking are. station. Tra yeah, oh, south okay. of tracking See, station. Just south of the tracking Sorry. station okay, the in that Beach sure. Market. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's. Uh, there's also homeless people in there, you know, and occasionally, you know, there's police in there. Right. And we've had illegal aliens come in through there. <laughs> the city line pretty much cuts off right at JC line. No, it cuts or off or up Shores. at Shoreway. It cuts off up Silver at Silver Shores. Yeah, up at the 7-Eleven. That's yeah. where the city line is. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm just not sure who owns that, that vacant property that's uh, down through there. But, you know, you just got to watch yourself in signage of private property. Yeah. It's probably part of Sexton's. I don't, I'm not guessing. I don't know. Because I think that condo, he's got that 99-year lease on those condos, land lease. Oh, is that right? No. Some I don't know. I really some, of, some of them, kind of the middle ones there, the ones closer to Sexton Plaza. Mm -hmm. He does, yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other? As bad as it can be there. Will no parking really be paid attention to? Because when, <laughs> when people are in there, they're going to park for whatever. Pretty much. Uh, that's a lot of other ordinances. Everybody's testing. <laughs> Whoever wants to pay the money to test it when it gets down to. All right, seeing as how no other business, well, I guess we have to go. There are chairman's matters. I have nothing. Members' matters. I have nothing. Next meeting, February 10th. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.